Hello everyone. I wanted to do something a little bit different for this unboxing. It has obviously been a while since I've done a legitimate unboxing. Uh, and this is going to be roughly a comparison of two falchions from Windless. So I actually purchased on sale the uh, Battlecry version of their falchion. And I have here their old style of falchion. So I'm going to set that aside right over here. We will revisit it in a moment. Um, but I also don't know if I've actually done a proper unboxing of a battle cry uh, weapon. So uh, it's possible. I might not have remembered having done it. Uh, but I figure I'd show you what these things look like when they're actually packaged up. And then do the rough comparison. So um, like I said, I got this on sale. Honestly, that's about the only way I would actually buy most wingless swords as well as certainly the battle cry line. I'm not necessarily the the biggest fan of their aesthetics, although I don't, I'm not completely opposed to it. They uh, they come with a few different things that Windless has started doing. This is a care, um, like how to care for it. Uh, and then they have also a certificate of authenticity that they go through, like who's the maker, how long that maker has been making swords, the details of the sword. That's all meant to just kind of give you a sense that this isn't just necessarily some sort of uh, mass producing, although it is mass produced to an extent. These, you know, windless to their credit, they do actually spend time to make their weapons and uh, and they do have uh, quite a few number of smiths that do the work on it. So this is one of the things that really bothers me about the way this is packaged is all this crappy foam. Uh, it doesn't cost much more for someone to get good foam or to just find a better way in general to, to pack it. And, uh, and having an exposed blade the way they do, it's also a little bit scary when you're picking it up. So you got to make sure you're actually handling it with care. They do sharpen these uh, pretty pretty well. Um, so if you are inexperienced handling swords or bladed weapons of any kind, I would highly suggest you are very careful when you unpackage one of their Battle Cry line. Or really anytime they do a sharpening job, Windless has gotten a lot better at doing sharpening, uh, in my opinion. And this sword comes with a sheath as well. Um, so let's get this separated out. Let's see here. Like I said, got to be careful. And of course, they got an end cap on the tip here. Get these last couple of last couple of spots undone. One more down the very end. So I have this odd interest in the battle cry line quite honestly um there's a part of me that as a collector wants to just have it represented in my collection um just almost a general interest in uh less so the historical reproduction side and more so just the uniqueness of what comes from various companies um and i find because companies like uh, cold steel tend to do the kind of blackened look a lot um yeah, you know, it, it's not exactly the most unique or new thing ever, but certainly for Windless, it's different. Windless doesn't tend to do these kind of blackened overlays or appliques that they do for the Battlecry line. So um, there are a few things that make it kind of stand out, and I, I think really my my MO with this is to just to just purchase these Battlecry weapons uh, when they're on sale or when I can get them for... Uh, certainly below what would normally be the retail price. I actually have behind me, I never did a, a first impression or even an unboxing because I picked it up in person, but behind me on my rack here, I actually have uh, the, the Battle Axe and the Fiore Warhammer. Uh, so I think it's the Cressy Battle Axe maybe? I don't remember what they called it. Um, and, uh, and I picked them up. So I'm just kind of adding to my Battle Cry collection, even though I don't necessarily, it's not like I'm sold on it per se. So this is the the, the scabbard that they have set up. They have a basic kind of frog system uh, that allows it to kind of sit on a belt, hang uh, a little bit on your belt. This is really only designed for right-handed people. So I don't actually know if they have an option for people who are left-handed, um, but it's right-handed option, really kind of a fairly basic thing. It fits with the aesthetic that they go for for these, these swords. Um, or these weapons in general, because obviously, like I said, they also do things like Warhammers. One of the ones I find pretty interesting is that they've now done, or they at least have uh, planned to release a version that is the uh, a Scottish broadsword, so basket-hilted broadsword. All right, let's see if we can get this off. And there we go. 
All right, it, it takes a while to unbox things uh, when they have it nice and packaged like this. And I'm just gonna set this down here. All right, and it's got this nice layer of oil on it. Um, but here it is, this is their version of the falchion. And when you compare it to the existing version, you can, say, you can see it's a very different blade profile. It's much shorter, it doesn't have uh, the back edge. It almost looks more like a machete. Um, a lot more basic in design, both in the cross guard, in the blade, and uh, the big differences, in my opinion, the ones that really matter, uh, are how they are constructed. So uh, the old one is actually a uh, threaded pommel, and this one is, in fact, a peened pommel, which is just right there. Uh, fairly basic peen. Uh, and then the leather wrapping is maybe a little bit, a little bit nicer on this one. It's got a little... Uh, inlay here, so um, yeah, so it, it's a it's a falchion, right? It looks like a, a falchion, and it more or less feels like one. It feels a little bit heavier, so I want to kind of compare this. I want to compare this in my right hand, my dominant hand. Uh, I'd actually say they're about the same, really. Uh, kind of kind of the same general gravitational drag that kind of pulls the tip down. That's pretty common for a falchion because it's. Very much blade heavy, a lot in comparison to many swords. And so you get that nice blow in there. Um, in my opinion, I actually think I like the design of this one better because it has a broader head. It feels like the mass is a little bit more um, centralized and with the blade being a little bit shorter, uh, you know, you get that extra mass uh, without, you know, without having to add a lot of extra weight, kind of near that, that cutting point near that tip. There's some interesting aspects as I look at this. As, as how this is made, and, and I'm seeing some interesting little details. So right here near where uh, the blade meets, meets the cross, it actually kind of dips in a bit. I would think that's maybe uh, the outcome of this being more of a hand-forged blade, one that has been finished maybe less. It's kind of one of the tricks of swords like this, that they put these kind of, uh, this blued effect or the black and applique, uh, is that they... They don't have to do as much finishing work. It's actually almost better for them. And it should be sharp. I will grab, I don't have any pieces of paper, but I imagine it is sharp enough. I will, of course, do a test if I ever do a review of it. Uh, but it is it is a pretty decent falchion. And like I said, I got it for a pretty good deal. I don't remember the exact cost, but it wasn't that much more than $100 when I picked it up. Uh, so I'm always happy when I can get a halfway decent sword for uh, under $200 really, but uh, certainly just above a hundred is, is the best. And um, because it does come pre sharpened, I don't have to do a lot of work there. And I like falchions. They're, they are a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I, I will always reiterate that swords are not, um, not toys. They are in fact weapons. But that said, falchions are a lot of fun to play with. They're a lot of fun to do cuts with. Uh, and they make you feel like you're a lot better than you are at it. Uh, but this is a pretty interesting one. So I'm, I'm kind of doing some comparisons as best I can between the two. I feel like uh, the machining work on this one isn't nearly as good. Again, it's, it's rougher. So uh, I will get a close-up of it. But uh, you can see right here in, in the fuller, they've basically ground into the blade that it's a pretty uneven grind. And uh, that's not ideal, um, but again, this is a fairly inexpensive sword if you're buying it well below retail price. I think details like that would make me a little bit more upset if I had paid the, the full asking price for it, uh, but they're, they're then passable because I didn't. So um, in terms of direct comparison, I would say they, they feel roughly the same in the hand. Um, again, you, you can see that one is certainly much shorter than the other. And uh, this one's got uh, a much narrower blade in terms of overall width. So you're really changing, what you're really changing in terms of a falchion here is you're, you're changing uh, kind of the dynamics profile of the, of the sword more than anything. Uh, this one will probably be a little bit more agile, has a slightly better cutting range, um, but it's also going to then reduce the impact in the cut. The effective mass at the center of percussion is going to be significantly different, I would imagine. And... Uh, so it's a trade-off, right? A little bit extra range, a little bit more mobility, and then a little bit less range, but packing a real punch with this. Uh, so it's interesting. It's a little bit different, 
And uh, like I said, I'm just kind of adding to the Battle Cry collection uh, slowly whenever they go on sale. So I'm not terribly disappointed. I, I think it's a decent weapon. If you like this aesthetic, it's probably a really pretty decent falchion to pick up. Uh, I wouldn't have many complaints on the face value just looking at it. I would certainly want to give it quite a few bits of try. I will say that uh, as I'm looking at how it's constructed, it actually, it looks like they have done an epoxy in between the blade and the cross, which is interesting. So maybe that will actually help keep it from rattling over time and keep it a little bit more secure and firm. Yeah, fun, fun little sword. I do, I do adore falchions. I wish I had more in my collection. Rectifying that a bit with this one, but I'd certainly like to get more. Uh, really, really pretty good for the price I paid. I would say if you can wait, uh, get it at a cheaper price when it goes on sale. Because this did, this was like a deal of the day, which I was very surprised they did a battle line uh, item, or sorry, battle cry item in the uh, deal of the day on the Museum Replicas website. But they did, so I picked it up. All right. Uh, that's my first impression. Without having much more to say, I'd, ha I, you know, I'd have to go do some tests. So I will leave this video there. Um, hope that's at least a little bit helpful for anyone who has been looking at this sword, looking uh, for a way to actually uh, determine if it's worth a purchase. Certainly, I I I'm sure there are people out there who've done more full reviews of it. So keep checking around for different reviews and make sure that it is indeed what you are looking for. Uh, but I think it's a pretty good, pretty good sword. So cheers, guys.